All right, I gotta say that this board is pretty freaking sweet. I've had this thing sitting here, not really doing much, and I finally carved out the time to play with it and really put it through its paces. Meet the Super 6C Cluster Board by DeskPie. Yeah, that DeskPie. The same people that made that sweet 10 inch mini rack that I have. Also make this Raspberry Pi Cluster Board that lets you cram six of these CM4 compute modules onto a single mini ITX motherboard. Think of it like a tiny data center on your desk, you know, without the $10,000 power bill. If you're here looking for a full setup guide, including step-by-steps on how I installed Docker Swarm on this cluster board, I got you covered. It's in my GitHub and the link to that is in the description below. But today, today is all about reviewing this beast. What's it good at? What sucks about it? Should you buy one? Let's break it down. So what really makes this board special? Unlike a standard Raspberry Pi cluster where you zip tie a bunch of SBCs together, like a DIY blade server from hell, this thing is actually an integrated motherboard. Six of the CM4 slots, each running independently, so you could cluster some, leave others standalone, or even run multiple Docker swarms all on the same board, which is actually pretty cool. Each slot actually has its own dedicated NVMe for persistent storage. Yes, real NVMe, not like a USB adapter or something. Each board also has a micro SD card slot. Depending on the compute modules that you have, there's also options for onboard storage like this one. That's what that is right there. It has dual gigabit ethernet ports that work with an onboard eight port switch, managing the network between all of these compute modules and it's tiny look at the size of this thing here's my phone that's pretty small this is a mini itx form factor motherboard so you could throw this in pretty much any pc case that's made for these mini itx boards or they even make dedicated super 6c board cases that are made for this or mounted in a rack like i have here now before you go all in there's a couple of things that you need to know First off, DeskPy did send me this board to review in exchange for a video, which is what we're doing now. But that's all I got was the board itself, which is great, but remember, you have to get each of these compute modules, as well as heat sinks, storage, SD cards. Really, I guess that's about it. Oh, and fans. These boards get a lot hotter than you think they would. There's not much to it, right? They get spicy. Each of these boards ports, these compute module slots, have you, um, have a five volt output that's meant for fans like this. Very intuitive there. Power wise, you have two options. You've got a 19 volt power plug or 24 volt power plug. That's the barrel connector here. Or you can go with a 12 volt ATX power port like on power supplies in just a general desktop but there's no onboard power management so remote restart requires the push of a button so what can you actually do with a six node raspberry pi compute cluster board well first thing that comes to mind which probably is going to come to a lot of you is docker swarm and microservices and that's what I'm using it for. And it works flawlessly. Perfect for self-hosting, home automation, scaling microservices across multiple nodes and load balancing as needed. Again, a full walkthrough of how I set this up is in my GitHub link in the description. But on top of that, you could stand each of these up as their own dedicated standalone server, really. Each node doesn't have to be in a cluster. You can run individual workloads like Nextcloud for file management, Pi-hole, ad blocking, DNS, Home Assistant, or even Proxmox, and run a few lightweight VMs. Technically, you could run ML on these Raspberry Pis, but the CM4 isn't exactly a GPU powerhouse. 
So for things like object detection or machine learning at the edge, you'd probably be better off with one of those Jetson Nano devices or something with a TPU accelerator. But hey, if you want to try it, you can. All right, time for some real talk. What's awesome about this and what's not so much? I'm not gonna go through this full list, but you can read it yourself right here. Some of the things that stand out to me that really kind of stink is there's no support for RAID within this board. All of these drives are configured and set up as standalone storage drives. There's no RAID support, there's no redundancy built in here. And each node on the board itself shares that one gig connection network switch essentially. And price. The board itself isn't that expensive, but man, I did not realize how expensive these little boards actually are. This one, for example, is four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of onboard EMMC storage. All of them have the same CPU. It's a quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor, I think. And this one has Wi-Fi built in. So this is one of the beefier boards. If I would have bought this new on Amazon, they're like 80 bucks each. Luckily, I found great deals on eBay. Quick tip, if the compute module has onboard storage, it's not compatible with the SD storage as well. But um, you'll pretty much brick your board if you flash firmware to it that says only boot from the SD card because then it doesn't see the onboard storage anymore and it won't let you boot from the SD card. Anyway, to really get this thing up and running completely with all the peripherals that you need and the compute modules and the storage and everything that you need, it gets pretty expensive pretty quick. That being said, you don't have to buy all that at once. You can buy one or two of these and start running your workloads right away. As you get more funds, add more storage, add more compute modules, add the fans. Actually, I, I think you should get the fans at the time you buy the heat sinks. So is it perfect? No. Could it have better networking? Sure. Does it still kick ass as a compact Pi powered cluster? Absolutely. So now you're asking yourself, should you buy the Super 6C? Well, if you're looking for the ultimate Pi powered cluster board, the Super 6C is a really good option for that. It's flexible, it's powerful, it's packed with features, it's expandable, and a lot of that you may not get with other SBC clusters. Oh, and before you ask, yes, the Super 6C is compatible with the CM5 boards. So if you're thinking about next generation CM5 compatibility, this board is ready for it. Now, does that hint towards something foreshadowing? No, not in this economy. So want to see how I set this up from scratch, start to finish? Link to the GitHub is down in the description. Interested in picking one of these up? Affiliate links are also down below. Grab one before they sell out again. And if this video helps you out, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more home lab hardware, Pi projects, and self-hosting deep dives. Leave a comment down below. What would you run on a six node CM4 cluster?